Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameTube, and welcome to our first episode of our What Needs To Be In Zoonomaly series. So the character we created for today's video is called The Snake. So we go into this character's location, gameplay mechanics and all that good stuff as well. But before we do any of that, do be sure to leave a like and subscribe to GameTube as it helps a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. As always with these videos, I like to add that everything I say isn't linked to the overall universe and lore of Xenomaly. This is just a fun what-if scenario and a fan character, and we hope you enjoy. Alrighty, well with that all out of the way, let's get into the character of the Snake. So before we get into this new creepy character, let's first take a dive into the setting and overall story of Xenomaly. So the game has you playing as a new recruit for an organization known as the Keepers of Bloom Order. Our main protagonist's mission is as follows. A zoo has been taken over by monsters from another dimension called Blue Mortar. Our intel suggests that the cause of this monster infestation is locked away behind a massive facility door within the zoo. Someone has broken the key to this door into 20 shards and hid them all around the zoo. It's your job to recover all 20 shards, reassemble the key and stop whatever is causing this monster infestation. Whoever hid the key shards did not make them easy to find. They have altered the zoo significantly by building large structures that puzzle the mind, making it harder to recover the shards. Although a tough mission is ahead of this new recruit, they've also been given a special device that will help them along the way. And this device is known as the Bloomerbang. The Bloomerbang we supplied you with will be an invaluable tool for your defense and exploration. Its powerful blasts of light can deter monsters and push physical objects away. The Bloom Spectrum screen will also allow you to see the invisible radiation given off by anything from Bloom Order. You will find it to be quite helpful on your mission. Good luck! So with the help of this device, our new recruit managed to solve all the puzzles throughout the zoo and collect all the key shards. But this wasn't an easy task. They had to survive against many monstrous creatures along the way. These include creepy variations of monkeys, cats, ostrich, fish, and even the zookeeper. The player had to enter each and every enclosure to collect the key shards, and in the end, they collected all 20 and assembled the key. They then unlocked the large doors and completed their mission. You have completed your mission successfully. After successfully turning off the bloom machine beneath the zoo, the monsters have been returned to Bloom Order. We will be sending a team to extract the machine for further study and to start work on restoring the zoo. Thank you for your service and congratulations on your success. We will be in touch. Ellis Entelman, Director of Operations, Keepers of Bloom Order. So the fact that there's a whole organization called the Keepers of Bloom Order would mean that this incident wouldn't be the only one. And like it says at the end of the document, the organization did indeed keep in contact with the new recruit. So it turns out that another zoo has been affected by the Bloom Order. Someone has set off another Bloom machine underneath the new zoo and spawned a whole number of new monstrous creatures. It's now up to the recruit to once again take on these creatures and shut down the Bloom machine. Armed with their trusty Bloomer Bang, they set off on their next mission. When they arrive at the new zoo, things are a little different. The main doors that lead to the underground facility are now sealed shut by a digital lock. Spread all throughout the zoo are 30 hidden codes. The player needs to use the Bloomer Bang scanner in order to locate these special codes. Each time the player scans a code, the digital lock would register a new number in its sequence. So once again, there's plenty of different animal enclosures that the player can pick from. Each one houses a number of deadly bloom animals that they'll need to deal with. But the first area that they pick is the reptile enclosure. And it's here that houses the first character they'll meet. And this character is the snake. Like the rest of the bloom animals, the snake is quite the odd looking creature. Instead of a long and slender body, the snake has four limbs, two legs and two arms but each extremity is a creepy looking snake's tail. The long neck and head appear to be poking out of a strange opening in the body. It's almost like it's using this body and it doesn't belong to them. The snake's mouth is filled with multiple sharp teeth and two large deadly fangs. The snake is highly venomous and should be avoided at all costs. One bite from its fangs would inject its lethal bloom venom into its victim and it would all be over. 
So when the player enters the reptile enclosure, there doesn't seem to be any sign of blue mortar animals anywhere. So they push on and try to locate the hidden codes. In the reptile enclosure, there would be two codes. Both of these codes would be kept behind a puzzle. And the first puzzle has the player activating a number of switches. They need to figure out the right sequence in order to reveal the first code. Mainly, this would be a guessing game with trial and error, but the player can scan with their bloomerbang to see a hint to which lever is next in the sequence. Eventually, they activate all the switches in the correct order. And once that happens, the code can now be scanned. The moment they do, the snake suddenly appears. The player needs to keep their distance and stop it from getting too close. When it comes to the snake, it can be held back by the bloomerbang. One shot will cause its neck and head to retreat back into its body. But this won't last for long, because seconds later, the snake's head would re-emerge and it would be in an angered state. Sometimes the best choice would be to run and hide. The snake would look around for the player, but eventually it would wander off elsewhere in the reptile enclosure. Now the player has to work on finding the second code in this area. After searching around, they find themselves at the next puzzle. This time they need to crawl through a maze and try and locate the code at the end. But as soon as they enter the maze, the snake would enter as well. It would slither out of its strange four-armed suit and reveal its long body. So now, whilst the player is navigating through this maze, the snake would also be slithering after them. They wouldn't have much time to stop and think about where to go, because the snake would be hot on their tail. If the player stops at all, it wouldn't be long before it bites them and eats them whole. Eventually, after frantically navigating through the maze, they locate the second code. They quickly scan it, and another number gets added to the digital lock. The back of the cage maze opens up, and the player can now exit. With the two codes scanned, that's all that's left for this area. So now the player leaves the snake behind and moves on to find the other codes. But they can only wonder what deadly blue mortar animals await them next. So I think that the snake would be an interesting first choice for the new creatures at the zoo. Not only is their design quite creepy, but I think the gameplay mechanic that they could add would be pretty interesting as well. I like the idea that the snake has a creepy weird body that they can sliver out of and have a different way of chasing the player. I think this could be pretty challenging and definitely keep the player on their toes. But as to what different animals will appear next, we'll just have to wait and see. Alrighty everyone, well that's what we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps a lot and it's greatly appreciated. As always, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the snake, and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty, well thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one, bye.